Hello people, welcome to an, another video about this Palmac G5 and um, this is going to be a bit of a special video because this is a video about this Palmac G5 here that's not very special it's just a 2 gigahertz um, early 2005 nothing special there and you're right because there's not, not really anything special about it however I'm going to be hopefully upgrading the RAM to the maximum because theoretically there's no reason why I shouldn't because, let me explain, this is a stick of RAM that was inside here. This should be a working stick of RAM. As you can see, if you see that it says 5400. If you look here, it also says 5400. Now, this only has four RAM slots, so it means it can only go up to four gigabytes of RAM. But, yes, it should be able, it's like these RAM sticks seem to, the 5400, I'm assuming means PC 5400, right? That's what we'd think. Um, no, this doesn't. Say 5400. Warringly. I see 400. So maybe. Is there a code thing on here that suggests 400? Because presumably I'm assuming the 400 means 400 megahertz. Yeah, so this RAM is DDR1 um, and not DDR2. The late 2005s are DDR2. Um, don't worry, these are all DDR1s. Um, also, I've, I've got to say about this. So you see it says 2 gigs there. Um, this is a horrible marketing life. Well, mm, truth stretching that Kingston did. I don't know if they still do. So you see it says Kev2. Key of two means it's a key of two, so they came in pairs like that. The num the amount of RAM advertised is referring to the amount that it both sticks are. So in reality, um, the Intel these two make two gigs, therefore it says two gigs there, and each stick is one gig, which is uh, yeah very questionable, questionable. Um, by the way, I've not turned on this computer in quite a while. I will mention that because it is quite an important piece of information. But with my magic skills, hopefully um, I'll be able to put it in. Have I put it in the right way? Yeah, I think I've put it in the right way. Also, one of the... Um, Things is broken up there. It's, it broke off. That was my fault, not like person who got this. But yeah, so I believe I got this on the 21st of March. So around that time, um, you'll be seeing this video. So there's that. Um, yeah, so theoretically. This should work, although, ironically, I'm pretty sure last time I tried, these sticks just didn't work for some weird reason. Well, I say these sticks. I only had two of them, so I died. But yeah, let's get to work. Okay, so they all should be in now. Now, next part is get some storage device. Um, and simple answer is there's one storage SSD of some sorts that's going to have um, some sort of PAM PC operating system on is this. So what I do is I'll reverse my legs and plug it in. There it is. And I've put the thing on that will stop the fans from going absolutely berserk, I guess. And yeah, 
It's also missing a disk drive, but I'll probably fix that later, don't worry. So, what's next? You can probably work it out. It's plugging it in. Also, you might have noticed something else missing, and I've only just noticed it's missing. Fans are supposed to be there. Fans in. Um, and I've got two of the cables here. I just need to get a cable and a mouse. And then done. I can power it on. Okay, moment of truth. I've not turned this on in a while. I don't know if I've said that. And let's just... See if the display turns on. No chime worryingly. Um. <laughs> I've all things to say. I should probably get a bit closer and maybe adjust. It just pops up with grub. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I probably need to go in the boot picker, so yeah, let's try that. This is more like it, so you've got Debian there, which it was trying to boot into. You've got Tiger, Solve Leopard, and then Leopard. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm going into Sorbet Leopard. It, let's be real, it's kind of scary having a giant Apple logo there, yeah, there because, you know, it's probably running like 640x4A or 800 by 600 you know. Don't know why, but it's in the desktop. Let's go. Also, let's see the RAM. Um, yes, I've maxed out the RAM. Four gigs of RAM. Let's go. Yes, I'm happy with that, in case you couldn't tell. Shall I get some more stuff up and running? Mmm, yes, I think is what you are saying, potentially. Okay, so this is the Palmac G5 quad that I've not at all got like to properly boot into macOS, so I've sort of been using it as a storage unit. Um, I've put in the hard drive from um, my from 2007 iMac that isn't the one up there. Um, it's got a Leopard install, so uh, that should work. Um, that should be bootable. Otherwise, it's got um, El Capitan and a Tiger install, but you know, Intel Tiger is a different thing from PowerPC Tiger. Well, it's on Leopard. Um, it's bootable across both platforms, PowerPC and Intel, um, in case you didn't know. So I should be able to boot into Leopard on here, although the only problem is I don't really have a place to put it in. I can't really put it in because of the mounting thing and I sort of don't really want to break it off, even though the reality is it's not going back in the iron Mac, so I don't know. <laughs> Bit of a problem. Can't really have it like that. All that. I could maybe use the one that was in there. I think it's still in there, the hard drive from that, which has got Tiger, but yeah. So I've got to install the RAM as well, um, and I'll see if I can get up and running. I am also limited on um, DVI cables. I've got a DVI to VGA. I think I might have two DVI to DVI cables, I think. And then I've got HDMI to DVI and then DVI to VGA. Um, yeah. So, hopefully I'll be able to get all three of these up and running. That one, you know, should work perfectly. This one is still to be determined, really. And, yeah, I'll see you in a bit, I guess. Okay, so I've got it connected up. Now, annoyingly, I couldn't find... The DVI to VGI. I found another DVI to DVI. Um, the only problem is the cable goes up 
to here. It says DVI to VGA, even though that's clearly a DVI to DVI. Uh, you've got to trust me with this. But it's connected up to that monitor. That's like, you know, three meters away. So, not the most convenient setup, but oh well, I've turned it on. And it should have, it made the chime. So there's that. Will it show up with Apple logo? I mean, it should do, it chimed. Oh, yeah. And it's complaining about boot drive. Hmm. Either that's not plugged in or somehow it's just not detecting. Um. Oh, I think the power has gone out. No. It is in, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, what I guess I can do, for now this is a temporary solution. Oh, actually, I think this one's got a, well, the SATA cables doesn't work. So I think it's, that's why it's having issues um, and not because of the hard drive. Oh, yeah. I think that's what's going on, at least. Okay, so it just chimed, um, and I've you know swapped the SATA port. Let's see what happens. Will it be? That's the main question. That's the important question, and nothing more important than that. It does take a little while. I mean, it took a while, a little while to spit out some display stuff. Um. But, um, yeah, well, worryingly, nothing. Um, um, that's in. So I don't know what's going on there. Attempt number three, I guess. No, attempt two since swapping the SATA cable. Will it turn on? Will it turn on? Yes. And yes, it, it's got, it's now working the drive. There's no spinning Apple logo, which is a bit of a problem for reasons you can probably work out. So there's that. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, to be fair, I've never been able to boot, as I said earlier, I've never been able to boot this quad into macOS. Um, so I don't really know what's going on, to be honest. So, yeah. There's that. Yeah, it's just getting stuck at the Apple logo. Okay, so... Um, there's been one solution that has been advised. Um, of course, PRAM reset is one of the things that I could do, but I think I've already done this, done that, and you know it's clearly not working. However, apparently I can do an SMU reset. Um, now earlier I, I did see the um, button, so it's a button on the motherboard. Um, I saw the button for it, so. What what it is? Uh, that doesn't really matter too much. But take out the fan, oh, and you see that little button down there. Press it, and then I think that should be it. I, I shall quickly look at the thing just to make sure. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Okay, I should now turn it on. I think it's because the hard drive doesn't um, fall out because it's kind of important. And hopefully it hasn't been damaged. It shouldn't do. It was all landed on carpet. Chime. That's something. Now, go get up. 
point camera at monitor, this monitor here, and see what happens, you know, vertically, you know, maybe it'll be sold, if not, I'll do maybe a you know, PRAM reset. Um, nothing yet still. Um, I need to try again. Like, um, turn it on again. Cause yeah, that's what I did last time. Eh, at least showed the Apple logo. Yo. Yeah, looks like I'll do that. Okay, so I've turned it on. Chime. Then maybe it's been sold. You never know. Ooh, mystery. So I probably just do. And it's there. And it's done so it's slightly different. And Colonel panicked. So it's actually going for Tiger. I think this is, might be trying to beat Tiger because of the Colonel. No, the current version says for October 2007. So it might be actually trying to go into Leopard. Feels like earlier we've said, oh yeah, like, that's... I don't know, it might be. You yeah, know what the solution is? Go into the beat menu and see what happens. And it looks like I was correct. It was trying to boot into... Tiger, which is Intel, hence the error, and the install disk one is the Intel Tiger installer, so that won't work. It's the Leopard I want, and luckily, because this is a late 2005, you know, Power PC Mac, I should be able to control this just with the keyboard, which is quite convenient, theoretically. There we go. Although, oh, I was going to say, oh, the spinning thing wasn't there. It is, although it's stuck now, which is a different problem. So there's at least that. Oh, it spins slightly more. I mean, it's better than before. It's doing something. I think we can agree on that. So, there's that. <laughs> I find it funny, it's just slight occasionally spinning. I should probably zoom in, sorry. I can probably do it. Go a bit closer. It's a bit out of focus though, annoyingly. Um, there we go. My hand's not very steady, as you can probably tell. To be fair, I'm on 2x soon. So it's going to show my unsteadiness of my hand even more. Uh, annoyingly, it's not actually going, but basically it just like spinned to more and stuff. So, hmm. PRAM set, reset. Maybe a solution. I don't know. There we go. Although, oh, I was going to say, oh, the spinning thing wasn't there. It is, although it's stuck now, which is a different problem. So there's at least that. Oh, it spins slightly more. I mean, it's better than before. It's doing something. I think we can agree on that. So, there's that. <laughs> I find it funny, it's just slight like occasionally spinning. I should probably zoom in, sorry. I can probably do it. Go a bit closer. It's a bit out of focus though, annoyingly. Um, there we go. My hand's not very steady, as you can probably tell. To be fair, I'm on 2x soon. So it's going to show my unsteadiness of my hand even more. Uh, annoyingly, it's not actually going, but basically it just like spinned to more and stuff. So, 
Hmm. PRAM set, reset. Maybe a solution. I don't know. Okay, so it looks like this is now having the same problem again. It fans me up, so I might need to press the button again. But yeah, as you can probably tell, this power mat is quite problematic, which is unfortunate. But to be fair, it was 11 quid and it's a quad. So, yeah. Yeah, so I've come up with the genius idea of how about I do a, you cannot see what's going on, a geek bench on this. I've done it on the quad down there, a geek bench. Um, so why not do it on here where it'll be slightly worse? You know that, but how much worse is the question. That is the score, 1831. Now let's um, save it and see what the quad got. I think I've also done the Mac Mini down there. So should be able to compare. So I've got the quad there. Although I don't see the um, one for the, um, not for the Mac Mini, which is uh, weird. It might be on that disc down there to be fair but oh well it is what it is um let's get the other one up so i believe it was 1831 oh my god that is a difference 1838 and 1831 wow i'm actually surprised at how big <laughs> the difference is Oh my god. Wow. Not as if it's all properly sort of focused in, but um Yeah, I honestly wasn't expecting that to be that big of a jump. Like this. Not this one, I I tested it on that one, but yeah. This, I should probably zoom out. This has got over, you know, 15, well, just under like 1500 um, more geek bench points than that. And that is like one of the high. Well, I say high end, this is actually like the lower end model. So this is more of like a lower end model from, you know, it's the model before, like the, this is a low end model from, you know, early 2005. This is the high end model from late 2005. So, yeah, this is like the, um, model that came after but also the higher end model instead of you know the low end model that I've got here although I think this there might have been a 1.8 early 2005 I might be wrong but still a massive jump in performance which is crazy I just yeah I'm just surprised but I, I want to say that actually isn't too far off of, from, from this. I want to say, ran out of storage there. Um, yeah, I, I would say this is, was about 1300 score, but I very well could be wrong. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised. I've said that a couple of times, I'm just very, yeah. Also, this is like only the 30 bit version, not the 64 bit version, so there's that. You know, it could be different, like higher numbers or whatever, but I don't know. I don't know how to activate because presumably the servers are down. And also, currently, it's not even connected to the internet, this. So there's also that you've got to consider. Okay, I also would say, I um, think I might be able to add an airport card to this so we could use Wi-Fi. 
because I think it uses the same connector as my eMac and um, PowerBook G4. And, you know, I've got one that came with, you know, the PowerBook G4 because it's a laptop. And the PowerBook G4 isn't really in use, so I very well could just steal it. It's even now on the um, eMac, but I'm pretty sure it's in my PowerBook G4 right now. So, let's try that. Okay, so, card goes down here, and, um, it's not really fitting, so maybe I'm wrong, but it sort of looks the right shape, so I don't know. Okay, so, I'm pretty sure it's in, and, you know, it's the correct thing, it makes sense, it'd be weird to have, like, one in a similar form factor to one you've made yeah around the same time well i say around the same time technically it's from 2003 but it would be weird to change your form factor for a computer that isn't compact like the imac g5 in the background which uses a different card so does the um mac mini as well but yeah, it'd be weird if it didn't, I guess, so. Yeah, it appears to be in, so let's see what's going on. Correction from earlier, the early 2005 can also do it, um, do keyboard select. So I think I've, I think it's early, two, it's just the, two, it's the 2005 models. So I think correction, but I will do a thing on screen saying if I'm wrong or I'm correct about that. Um, I mean, there'll probably be a correction from earlier, but yeah, I just wanted to, to point that out. Okay, moment of truth. Annoyingly, the mouse has fallen off. I've also moved the keyboard and mouse here and then just sort of pushed the thing further along. So it's right on the edge. But moment of truth, let's get you prepared. Does it have, I mean, it's blank, so airport not configured. Does that mean it's detected it? Yes, it has. Let's go. Yes. It's got airport. Woo. So in other words, it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So there's that. Okay, so I hit enter and it's basically saying connection failed. So I need to configure my internet. To be fair, last time I've connected, you know, something this old to the internet where it doesn't quite have, you know, the latest um, security things. So I think like what WPA is something to do with security, you know. Um, it, yeah, it fails to connect in the route I had before, you know, I could do a setting change to allow more, like, older things to connect, basically, but, but you know, I had to go out of my way to this, and presumably, same goes with this, I can probably fix this. Can I be bothered, though, is a different question, and the answer is, no, so maybe what I should do is a hotspot because that's way more convenient to configure. Okay, theoretically it's connected, so if I do something like go to my website, if I go dot gc, it would work. Yes, it does, and once again, GitHub Pages has screwed my website up. And I genuinely don't know how because it's not in my pork bun config, like apart from the old one. So I have no clue what is going on with this, but it keeps on like occasionally taking over my actual website, which is uh, quite a big problem. And I don't know how it happens. But it does indicate it's working because if it didn't, it would 
be doing stuff like yeah so if i go to whatever it would work i can't think of the website that i could show you that i'd actually load in this browser that isn't mine annoyingly apart from you know like google but google is boring do you know what would be a bit more interesting what if i tried to connect magic mouse to the computer so focus camera um go up here um go here there should be a thing for bluetooth i think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it should have bluetooth support right um unless i'm losing my mind um uh, but I interface. Where the nerve is a six to four? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I shall do some searching. Okay, so it looks like Bluetooth was its own sort of separate thing until the last variants of the um. PowerBooks and iBooks, um, and mine's from 2003, so it's not going to be that, because 2003 is, you know, still two years before this, um, so I can't actually do what I wanted to do. I don't know how you get Bluetooth. Can you actually get Bluetooth, like, with the... Well, presumably you can. The combo card uses the same connector. Well, maybe it doesn't. I mean, I guess you'd have to even use a PCI slot, I die. And this is like another little slot for a Bluetooth card. But I don't know. I'm not an expert on these things. Okay, so apologies for doing this off camera. I've still not actually done all of it off camera, to be fair. And I'll get my phone to assist. But as you can see, you've got that little green thing. That is a Bluetooth module. And um, it's actually from the 2007 iMac. Um, and I've put it in. I need to connect it up with the antenna. But it does actually seem like that is where it can go. There's also another connector here, which I think also is for Bluetooth as well. So there's two different slots for it i think i think that's what's going on all i need to do is get up and connected with antenna which needs to be somewhere that's not an antenna so i don't want that that's for to be honest um should be antenna somewhere there Addition uh, antenna for the Bluetooth module, of course. Because that's not antenna. Oh, I think I see it. Yeah, I see it. Just need to pull it out. There we go. So I've got it out, and now I've got to do this. Maybe I should take out the module. Although, to be fair, the module was actually quite a pain to get in. So I've not been focusing on making sure you can see what I'm doing. So I do apologize if I pointed stuff off. But yeah, I'll see you in a sec. Um, I now have the magic mouse. I'm not sure you can really see it. Uh, oh, come on. But the magic mouse is set up. It's connected. Oh my God. Modern technology. It's got a magic mouse connected. Shall I do the same with the keyboard? Okay, so I've kept on trying to connect my the keyboard the, here to the computer and I've had no luck. Also, I'm not saying it's perfect because even if I put this on like the top of the Power Mac, it does lag out, but I'm assuming that's because of, you know, the antenna not being properly connected. I'm kind of surprised it really even picked up the mouse um, in the first place, considering the antenna's not properly in. And then, also it doesn't have like the 
antenna um, connectors on the like con extender thingies on the back. Um, so it's kind of a miracle it works. So there's that, I guess. But I guess the final thing to add to this um, Power Mac to get it really up to its well, an even better state than what it was when I got it is a disk drive because when I got it, it came with a disk drive. It wasn't even the original, I knocked a keyboard off of my lap. It wasn't the original disk drive. It was a replacement. How did I, you might be asking, oh, how do you know? The simple reason as to how I knew was due to the fact that it had a manufacture date of 2007. And yeah, basically it didn't work. Um, and I've got this drive over there. Um, I'm not sure if that's working or not, but it's not the one that originally came in that because it's like Apple branded and stuff. Um, and it and the original had like a front bed, a beige bezel. So I've got two drives that are laying around, um, IDE drives. Um, and this is one of them. I'm not saying this one works. It's got a manufacturer date of September 2004. So this is more, this is probably more like the manufacturer date that the disk drive that was originally in here would have had. So there's that. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, it's plugged in. It wasn't that fiddly. I thought it was a bit more fiddly, to be honest. It's been a while. Um, so turning it on and I probably should feed it a disc like a test drop test disc so this um I need to because I've got it's gonna boot into grub whoa I need to sort that out I forgot about that um look grub boom it grubbed me well like, that's a higher resolution than what it was initially I believe don't ask what's going on because I don't know Okay, so let's see, does the disk drive appear in disk utility? There's disk utility. Uh, yes, it does. Cool. Um, oh, oh, oh. I think it is dead. But don't worry, I have a, another drive that, although... The only problem is it's untested, basically. Um, you might be able to fix it by opening it up, but I don't know how really to fix these disk drives, to be honest, so. Oh, maybe I can see if, you know, fixing it, but I don't know. From the sounds of it, it's like the actual eject mechanism that's broken. And, you know, that very well could be fixable. It might be like a rubber band or something. That's going on. That's why it's not opening. Because it's not opening doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't work otherwise. It might work if you crack it open. Um, but, yeah. I'm not an expert on these. I've never really touched these. So, yeah. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so this is the other disk drive. I shall zoom out for your benefit, I guess. Um, and it's got a manufacture date of um, March 2007. And this is also from an Apple computer. This is actually from my Mac Pro 2006 that I've not been able to turn on. But it's IDE still. Um, I just need to get out of this thing. So I think there's... Yeah, there's two screws there, and then two screws there, so it's just four screws that I need to unscrew. Whether I do have the correct screwdriver for this um, within accessible range is a different question, though. I might not be able to unscrew it. Okay, so um, I've got the drive from the Mac Pro, I've got to unscrew it. I've also opened up this, you know, the drive that I was trying before. Um, yeah, 
Now the eject mechanism works because when I went into the option menu, it ejected and it also flew out. So I probably can mount it in properly. I, I do have like the little mounting screws. Um, I just need to, well, to, uh, well, test it first properly. Why are the arrow keys not working all of a sudden? Um, oh, I think it's the mouse was being held down or something. But yeah, so hopefully this drive will work, and that means I've got it in. I've got maximum RAM. I've got the well, an SSD, uh, it's, I think it's 24 gig, because I think it's the one from my PowerBook G4, which is now laying down there, and I should probably move it. Um, so let's zoom in and adjust the brightness accordingly. Um, there we go. So let's get the test disk inside the computer. Um, so I've got hot chip. So get hot chipped, haha, <laughs> tricks on you. Um I'll do this one handed on thumb and two X and um yeah, so I'll put this in and see what happens. Okay, so it's now in inside the computer and it's appeared as an audio C D, so it looks like it's working. Although it's also called being quite loud. I also should probably turn on the hotspot um, again on here so I can get like track info and stuff on hot Wi-Fi hotspot so currently it's got no security um, yes um, and my phone's there I need to zoom in sorry um, yeah okay Over to just eject. I think it should. If I press stop, important maybe first, and then eject, and then put it back in. It should come up with track titles. Okay. So. Oh, it's just the brightness for the sake of you being able to see and yes it's done it cool so now it's got track titles and stuff which is quite nice and also is the mouse connected yes it is that is also cool so the magic mouse is also connected to this and yeah I think it's going well Okay, so one more thing, you could probably work it out. Um, unplug the disk drive um, for easier access and mount it properly because it actually works. There we go, it's properly in. So, I guess, apart from the Bluetooth antenna not being properly connected, it's in the best, con well, I mean, I can pretty safely say, it's in the best condition it's ever been in. Um, I can safely say that. So, there's that. Because, you know, it didn't come with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Or a working disk drive. Or even any form of storage. It didn't even come with a hard drive disk. I thought it's funny, none of my Power Mac G5s, and I'm sitting on one as well, um, have actually came with any storage, which is um, something. Um, but yeah. So I guess I should put the side panel on. Where is the side panel is also a good question. So I see one there, but I'm assuming that's for the quad. Um, oh, it's right there. Oh, and also I need to put in the thing, that thing there, which is for the um, PCI cards thing. So there's that. I need to get in. And then we also got to eject. 
the disc out because I will forget otherwise. So there's all of that to do, which isn't much. Um, phone rail battery. So, um, I couldn't get to screw in the GPU, well, PCI card holder thing. I couldn't find a screw because I'm an idiot. But apart from that, yeah, you know, and the, you know, Bluetooth not being connected to the antenna is better than what it was before. So, really, all I need to do is just get it shut like that, and then boom. Now, it could also use with clean, I think, you know, quite a bit of this is just sort of dirt that's been left on it. But, it's still way better off than when it started, as I said. So, there's that. But I will try and give it a clean and see what happens. Okay, so I've cleaned it up quite a bit. So sort of the you can sort of see the marks from the wipes. But of course I'll eventually go away. It's not, you know, properly cleaned up and it also, you know, won't change the fact that this side panel really isn't in the very great shape. I mean, I don't really have any the uh, side panels that are in great shape really. That's alright, I guess. Like I mean the quads are not too bad, but they're still quite scratched up and stuff. This one's pretty maybe I uh, believe you not worse than the one here that's been liquid damaged, although I've not seen it for a while. Yeah, I'd say it's best. I mean it doesn't have like, you know, big marks like that. So I probably should, you know, just swap these two panels because you know it makes sense but yeah it's still in you know relatively good condition um well i mean you know in the inside it's what counts i guess um but yeah get rid of that there we go that's mostly gone yeah so i've not bothered with any of the other angles the other sides and even that was like five minutes worth of cleaning and this wipe has gone this wipe has gone really quite dry as well just so you know so it's not very effective anymore but to be fair it's nice and clean um yeah i don't really know what else to say so guess that's going to be it for today hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully you enjoyed pre some cool intro thing maybe that's happened as well and you know the higher quality editing hopefully as long as i don't get too lazy this video will be a lot more nicely edited in various ways potentially depends on what ideas i can think of but yeah also, don't forget I have a Patreon. Patreons get videos, early, video, early access to videos. I think it'll be one week now, from now on with the regular, less regular upload schedule. That's probably the plan, but I'm not certain. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today. Um, and also, it's only $1 or £1 or whatever a month for early access videos. You also get a role in my Discord guild and I'll eventually make it so you get a rank on my Minecraft server as well. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this and goodbye.